Hi, my name is Chris Mazur from Emprise Technologies, and today I'm going to walk you through sending an email with an attachment using Pervasive's data integrator. If you have any questions regarding any pervasive challenges that you may run into, or if you have ideas for additional tutorial video topics, please feel, reach, please feel free to reach out to Emprise and let us know how we can help. All right, let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, we're going to work in Process Designer, and we're going to create a simple process that builds a mail message, adds an attachment to it, connects to the mail server, sends the email, and then disconnects from the mail server. To get started, we need to define a process variable. The process variable is going to be used to hold the properties for the email message. So let's go ahead and name this one email message. The variable type is going to be a DJ message. In addition to our process variable, we're also going to need an invoker. Pervasive Data Integrator uses invokers to send emails, so let's go ahead and define an email invoker. And the type of this invoker is going to be SMTP email invoker. Now you can see here there's a number of options and properties that need to be set on this invoker object. Keep in mind that for this example, I'm going to use a series of strings as opposed to using macrodef variables, but we could very easily substitute in macrodef variables and accomplish the same goal. Let me go ahead and fill in some of my email mail server credentials and information here. Um, so username, password, server name, that's the name or IP address of our mail server. Port, which port do we want to send email on? Connection timeout and retry count, if our login to the server is successful, how long should we wait to timeout, and how many times should we retry? From there, we need to fill in the properties surrounding the from and to information for the email. So who's the email going to come from? Well, it's going to come from no reply at emptechllc.com. And recipients can reply to chris at emptech llc.com. Then we get to the to option or property of the invoker. Now here you'll notice there's two and there's also two lists. The difference between the two is this. If you'd like to send an email to one recipient or maybe a distribution group, you can use the to properties. However, if you need to send a mail message to multiple recipients, you need to use the to list property. Now, if I'm going to use the to property, I just put in the email address that I'd like to send the email to. However, if I need to use the to list and send the message to multiple recipients, what I need to do is I need to create a CSV file, comma separated file. And in that file, I need to have a list of the different email addresses that I wish to receive this email message. Um, and then on the invoker properties, instead of typing in that list, what we do is we put the full qualified path of the email list file. So that would be directory file name. Okay. Last property here that we need to worry about is the subject. What's the subject of our mail message going to be? Um, to keep it simple, I'll just put it at sample message. And go ahead and save this invoker at this point. So now that we've defined our email message object and we've got our invoker set up, the next thing we need to do is we need to build the mail message. Well, to build the mail message, we're going to use a, a script step. So we'll go ahead and put a rifle, rifle job out here and go ahead and open it and we'll call it build message. And let's go ahead and build the rifle script. Okay, so to get started, what we need to do is we need to define a couple or declare a couple variables. Um, Pervasive doesn't require that you declare all of your variables, but I, I do it as sort of a best practice to ensure that I remember which variables I have available to me to use in my script. So we'll go ahead and create our email attachment object. We'll also just create a variable called file text that's going to hold the contents of our attachment as we're building this attachment object. Okay, next we need to instantiate our DJ message objects. Uh, the first one being the process variable that we declared previously. And that's going to be our email message. So we'll set email message 
equal to a new DJ message object. And the argument here that needs to be passed in is the name of the object or the process variable that we declared. Um, at the same time, we need to instantiate the email attachment object as, again, a new DJ message object. And the argument here is the name of our variable. Okay. Now that we've got our variables situated, what we need to do next is we need to get the contents of the file that we'd like to send as an attachment. To do this, we can read all of the contents of that file or that attachment into memory using the file read method. This method just takes the path of the file that we want to read into memory, um, which essentially is what we're going to use to build our attachment. So let's go ahead and put in a static path here. Again, if we were using macro desk, this would be a great spot to plug in a macro def value to ensure that we've got some dynamic configurable um, ETLs here. Okay. All right. So up to this point, we've we've defined our objects. We've got the contents of our attachment in memory. Now we need to actually set the properties on our email attachment object. So to do that, let's go ahead and first set the body property, email attachment body, and we're going to set this equal to b64 encode, file text, and then the type of encoding that we wish to use, which is going to be this ISO 8859 underscore one. Okay. You notice here that I'm using an Excel file. We've actually run into some challenges in the past um, sending Excel files as attachments. And in a lot of business cases, it's really needed from our integration. So hence, this tutorial came about. And we're going to send an Excel attachment to ensure that uh, we, we know how to send these type of attachments to meet the business need. OK, a few properties that I need to set here. Uh, first one being the content type. Okay, we're going to set that equal to application slash vnd.ms slash or dash excel. Okay, the next property that we need to set is going to be the content transfer encoding. Because we're using an Excel file, we need to make sure that our encoding variables are set our properties are set appropriately, ensure that our recipients can open the attachment once they receive it. Okay. Then the, the last property that we need to set here is the file name. What do we want the attachment to be named? And for this example, we'll go ahead and just use the same file name that we're using um, to read the data in the memory. So we'll set that equal to sample.xlsx. OK, that looks pretty good to me. So now we've got our attachment object built. We still haven't attached it to the email message itself. To do that, what we need to do is we need to call the add attachment method um, that's associated with the um, email message object. So we'll do email message .add attachment, And we're just going to pass in our email attachment DJ message here. OK. Last piece, we haven't done this anywhere yet. We need to set the body contents of the mail message. So we can just say email message dot body equals, this is a sample message for lack of a better example here. OK. Up to this point, I believe we've got everything we need here. We've defined our variables. We've instantiated our objects, read the contents of our attachment into memory, built the attachment object added the attachment to the message, and populated the message body. Let's go ahead and validate our rifle script. We'll see that there's no syntax errors, so we can go ahead and save this with confidence. OK. So we've got the mail message. We've got three more steps that we need to put in place to send an email. And all three of those steps revolve around our email invoker. So to use that email invoker, we need, we need to use an invoker step. So let's go ahead and add the first invoker step. And the first thing we need to do is connect to the mail server. 
Okay, so we'll give it a name. We'll choose our invoker, which is the one we defined at the beginning. We'll set the action equal to connect. Click OK. Now that we're connected to the mail server, we need another invoker step to actually send the mail message that we just defined. So we'll call this send email. And our invoker, again, is going to be the email invoker. And our action is going to be to execute. The execute has one parameter, and that parameter is, what is our source message? Well, that's our process variable that we defined initially and just populated in the rifle script. So we'll call that email message. Just put the name of the process variable in there. Go ahead and click OK. The last step here is once we've sent the email, we want to make sure that we disconnect from the mail server. We, we don't want to leave a hung connection out there. So go ahead and disconnect the mail server. And again, we'll choose our invoker. Our action will be disconnect. And go ahead and click OK. At this point, I believe I'm ready to go ahead and connect all of my steps. So just to walk through this, we'll build the message, we'll connect to the mail server, we'll send the email, disconnect from the mail server, and then we'll end at the end spot here. We'll stop the process. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. So to run this, I'm just going to run the process. I can see that there were no errors. Uh, looks like I got an email that came through from no reply at mtechllc.com to myself. Um, let's go ahead and open this attachment, make sure that the encoding worked, make sure that the data came through as expected, and it sure looks like it did. All right, so that's how you send an email with an attachment in Pervasive. More specifically, how you send an Excel attachment using Pervasive Data Integrator. If your attachment type is a text file or some sort of flat file, the same process can be used to send that data file as an attachment with an email. I'd like to thank you for your time today. Um, again, if you have any questions or it, about any challenges you're running into using Pervasive Data Integrator, or if you have ideas for other video topics, please feel free to reach out to myself or contact MPRIZE with the contact information that's shown here. And thank you for your time.